Now, often our students might be hesitant to write. They might be um, unwilling to read out loud, to share their writing in public. And so a lot of these activities are designed to get students to reduce that fear, to get them to feel accepted in the classroom, to get their ideas to feel accepted um, in the classroom. Um, it's designed, we teach high school, but really any of these activities can be taken down to the middle school level. It could probably be taken down to the elementary school level as well. Actually, are there any elementary school teachers here? Yes? Okay. All right. Well, hopefully this will be helpful for you. Um, and our whole goal is to try to reach every single learner. Um, there's so many different activities that we can do, and we'll go through them today with you. But different ones really speak to different students, different strengths, um, and our goal is to try to, to, to get all of them involved. So um, once you get one of these packets, this is what we're going to use throughout the session. And just as a little intro, on the second page, you're going to find the table of contents. And we'll begin with pre-reading activities. So as Rilla said, we're going to run this like we would a classroom in the same progression. So we start with pre-reading activities. And then we're actually going to work with a text, which is a short story by Najim Mahfouz, Half a Day. And um, then go to focus free writing activities, some close reading activities, um, an activity on how to ask good questions dialectical journals, big paper discussions, a poem by Mutawa, History of My Face, then literary circles, some other reading and writing activities, um, another short piece vignette by um, Sandra Cicernos, My Name, and finally an art gallery. You're going to see some um, some quotations and some pictures up on the wall. So we really want this to be as interactive and as rela relaxed as possible. If you want to, to share an idea, if you want clarification on anything, please feel free to, to jump in at any moment. Uh, just okay. to something that came to my mind, you will notice that the two literary pieces we decided to use are by Arab authors. Uh, we take pride in King's, we have a course which is Arab literature in a global context. And I think we are the only school maybe around the world who does that, a whole year um, of uh, uh, works, literary works by Arab authors, whether they were originally written in English or in translation. Um, and so we decided that the pieces that we will use today will be by Najib Mahfouz and Khaled Mutawa, which are pieces that we do use in um, our curriculum. Yes. Um, so we'll turn to page three, and we have some pre-reading activities. Um, there's four of them. We won't actually go through every single one, but we will uh, try a couple of them at least. So first, making predictions. Making predictions about the text is extremely important for students because it allows them to think about the themes, to think about the ideas before they've, they've ever gotten into the text. It helps them to make connections between real-world ideas and what's going on in the text, so they're not just reading it in a vacuum of, of English class. Um, and it helps to, to improve their memory as well. So um, there's six pictures over here. So take a look at them with your group. Um, I think they're around, yeah, they're around the room as well. Yes. So if you'd like, you can, you can come up and take a look at them in the room. Um, otherwise, take a look at them here and try to see how many details you can notice. What connections can you make out of these pictures? Okay, so if you'd like, you can go through the questions here. Uh, what setting do you see? What characters do you see? What's the relationship between the characters? What is the predominant mood of the picture? And what is the conflict in the picture? And then finally, once you've done all of that, from whose perspective might the story be told? Okay, so please take um, five minutes, discuss this with your group, and then we'll come back together and share. So make the questions to be maybe your guide if uh, you need any help. Um, or you can feel free to, if you see other things that are not asking the questions, go ahead. So start discussing in your groups about what you see, what, you have in co what they have in common. Okay. Hello. Can I just ask you a question? Thanks. Sure. Now we started, now we start, you've just started, right? Yes, we just okay. started. So, so what did we we, are, we'll, we, are, we just introduced ourselves and we talked, this session is going to run like a classroom. Ooh. Today you guys are the okay. students and we're going to work on real activities that you can work I with in the classroom mm -hmm. and uh, take with you back to your schools. So the first uh, group of activities we're working with are pre-reading activities. We talked about the pedagogy behind, why are they important, how they, the students can make connections with the text, with the real world. Um, we I read, uh, we read many articles about how when you make your own predictions about a certain text, when you read things in the text, things will stick in your mind 
more and it will make you think about it deeper. So, um, so we're starting now, some of the pre-reading activities we will do in detail in now and some of them will just tell you what they are because we don't have time for every single okay. activity. So the first activity we're hoping that each group, each table will work as a group like we divide the students in the classroom in groups. So uh, the first activity has to do with the images. So we wanted you to look at the images, see what do they have in common, who are the characters, what themes do they carry, what the setting. Kind of you like have you some guided questions yeah, okay. over here and then we'll hear from each table and see what they have to say about Can that. A pen? Sure. Okay, let's come back together. Okay. And Can we come out together? Like for the sake of time, I'm sorry, we are going to interrupt sometimes. I know <laughs> probably you need more time, uh, but it's we are trying to go through as many activities as we can today mm -hmm. just to have you get a feel of, you know, and a sense of how they are. So we'll uh, start with this one. So could we please hear someone from each group um, share out their ideas? Who would like to share? Go ahead. I think we have uh, can talk about the difference between the past and nowadays, maybe. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Yes, please. Um, I thought it was interesting because last time I was looking at the picture at the top left. Uh, yeah, sorry, top right. Mm -hmm. Before looking at it, I sort of thought it was somewhere in Europe. And then I looked at the little fashion set in Egypt. So yeah. I thought it was a bit of like mm -hmm. architecture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice. Any other thoughts? Yeah, we thought it was all from the Middle East, it all looks Middle Eastern cities. Mm -hmm. Daily life, maybe. Daily life? Daily life? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Any other thoughts? Okay, so what we would do now is that we would keep all these predictions in mind. Think about what the text might be uh, about. From whose perspective might the story be told? That was the last question here. Does anybody have ideas on whose perspective the story Based might be? on the pictures, can you guess or predict? Photographer, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. It could be Najib Mahfouz himself. Yes. Good. Okay. It's actually not him, but he looks like him. <laughs> 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 All right, so we would keep these, these predictions in mind, tell the students to hold on to them. We might ask them to take some notes um, so that they remember them, and then we would go ahead and start reading the story. But we want to give you some other ideas of things to use. So if you would go to page four, um, there's, first of all, speed chatting. Now, this is really good for... a class that cannot sit still for a long time. Um, so you would have all of the desks in, um, in a single row, or in two rows, and have students sit in front of each other. You can come up with a couple of, um, of simple activities or simple <laughs> questions and have them sit in front of each other for exactly 60 seconds. Try to answer the questions and then move on to the next person. So they don't have time to really get distracted. They have to get right to it and then um, they move, move on. So it, they can be questions that you have prepared yes. earlier about that will give them uh, or make them predict ideas about what the text might be uh, mm -hmm. about yes. um, or questions about themes that they might find in the text. Um, it can be any kinds of questions that will make them thinking about what could be the text or what's coming up. And one of the discussions I had with the table over there that uh, predictions, as Miss Elizabeth said, um, are very important to make better connections in the minds of the students so because when they make the thinking themselves and they make the predictions, uh, later on when we read the text, uh, they are able to connect more and to remember things more. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, like Yes. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. All right. So then we have the Pictionary activity. So that is, um, it's good to do also with kids who want to run around a lot. Um, if you have three sections in the front of the room with flip chart paper like this, you'd have the class divided up into three groups and have a series of words. It could be words directly from the text, keywords, it could be themes, um, it could be anything that's related to the story, and then have one person come up from each group and start drawing that picture. And there the group members need to start um, guessing what the word might be. Okay, um, and then Arula will explain number four. All right, so for number four, I'm going to talk about two different ones. Um, so we'll start with the statement because this is something we will work on together. So around the room here, you will find two statements over here and two statements over there. Three, uh, three sorry. So for our kinesthetic 
uh, you know, learners and people who would like to move around. So I would like you to walk around, read the five statements, and see which one you agree the most with or you believe in the most, um, and stand by that statement. Stay there, and when you get together as few people, if one person, two, three, stood by one of the statements, I would like you to have a discussion of uh, uh, like 30 seconds, one minute, of why was this the one that you believe the most in, or uh, it's the most uh, one that you believe, in, uh, and get ready to defend your position. Uh, you will be giving a 30 second uh, defense of why this one is the most one you believe in. So let's walk around. And by the way, if, uh, if you stand by any of the quotes and you hear a defense by somebody which you were convinced with, you can change. walk and change and move to that side. <laughs> All right, what about there? What, what was your quote? change their mind about the position of where we're standing oh you uh, you're the only one standing oh, by it. Okay. the brave one yes <laughs> <laughs> all right what's the quote yes this is the greatest of uh, all human uh, blessings really because this uh, equals between people okay <laughs> sometimes sometimes <laughs> it is a blessing to feel that uh, the rich people <laughs> die as <laughs> 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 all right <laughs> okay, so let's let's go back. Let's go back to our seats. <laughs> All right. So uh, when we chose those quotes, um, those quotes actually are related one way or another to the story we are going to read right now. And um, having the students go around, uh, think about, of course, probably the perspectives of the students will be completely different than ours. Um, and what they choose will be based on their own beliefs and uh, what they think is true. So we will have them talk about it, um, think about these quotes, and then um, they go back and will be by that, if we do one or two, we don't have to do all pre-reading activities, we can alternate, you know, depending on the text. Because I don't think every activity works with every text. You know, some of them work, some of them they don't, and depending on the level of the students too. No, they, uh, they're not related. Okay. You can so make them related. The yes, them. you you can connect them and you can separate them. So, for example, the speed chatting that Miss Elizabeth talked about. Uh, maybe the questions that for the photos, it can be you know something as you know an, uh, uh, you know another activity that they can connect the questions or the answers they had with that or you can give them separate questions. So it's up to you whether you want to connect these activities or separate them or use different ones in different texts or, or passages. So, um, so what we're, I'll do next, after my students read the quotes, discuss them, we talk about the themes and the ideas and the quotes, why did they choose them. Um, now I feel that, okay, there is something in their mind about the text we're about to read. So the next step, oh, before I go, I just want to talk the perception could I, I just want to add something about the perception statements as well. So something you could do is that you actually make it like, worth something, like a prize. Whoever gets the most people on their group, on their side, will win. Um, so, I mean, it could be for candy. It could be for 
for bragging rights, whatever it is. But um, then it actually helps them to, to use their verbal skills for argumentation to actually get people to, to be convinced. So it can okay. be part yeah. of teaching argument skills yes. um, also when they do that. Um, the other activity, the perception cards, is something that I created with um, half a day. Um, those are, and we're not going to do it, I'm just going to ex quickly explain it. So I divide the students into groups and I give, depending on how many students I have, the, the time, um, and I give each group um, you know, any of those perceptions, prejudice, sexism, injustice, freedom. And then I ask them to, on three cards, they need to tell me how does a five-year-old see this perception or is aware or how, you know, does he find that? How does a 15-year-old, which is most of the ages that I teach, 15, 16-year-old see that, you know, perception or believe in it? And how does a 35-year-old or maybe how do, do their parents you know, they can think of how their parents think of prejudice, freedom, sexism, human rights. And um, they write the different perceptions of people at different ages for each one of them. Uh, you know, a little child, and some of them, you know, probably a five-year-old will not know what racism is or, you know, democracy. And it, this is fine, so we'll know how we change uh, throughout the years and how our perceptions and beliefs change throughout the years. So this is an activity that I do with them before we read the text. Um, and then after we read the text, I usually go back to the activity and say, then why did I do it? Why did I do this activity? What was the connection between this activity and uh, the text we're reading? So in order for us, yes. <coughs> no, 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 it's not homework, it's in the class. Uh, well, they can, but they can if, uh, if, you know, if I give this at the end of class and I say maybe you can ask your parents and tomorrow we'll talk about it, or based on their, how they see, you know, how adults around them behave, you know, and act uh, towards things. So what we're going to do now just to, since you've done all these pre-reading activities, probably you really want to know what is the story about? <laughs> so uh, we're going to read the story together. And the way we're doing this is a way we do it in class. And so, Liz, mm -hmm. you can talk about the way we're reading this. Okay, so the purpose of this is to have everybody involved, even the most timid student, um, and giving them the choice of when they're going to join in and how much they're going to read. So somebody can start. They read as much as they want to read. They could write, read one sentence, one phrase. And then from there, the moment they stop, somebody else picks it up. So the teacher is not directing it. The student is directing it. Um, so we'll come from, uh, we'll, we'll start on page six, and you please be a part of this. Whenever you feel like you want to read, you can read as much or as little as you want to. Um, so, here, Half a Day by Najib Mahfouz. I proceeded alongside my father, clutching his right hand, running to keep up with the long strides he was taking. All my clothes were new, the black shoes, the green school uniform, and the red tarbouche. My delight in my new clothes, however, was not altogether unmarred, for this was no feast day, but the day on which I was to be cast into school for the first time. My mother stood at the window watching our progress, and I would turn toward her from time to time as though appealing for help. We walked along a street lined with gardens. On both sides were extensive fields planted with crops, prickly pears, henna trees, and a few date palms. Why school? I challenged my father openly. I shall never do anything to annoy you. I'm not punishing you, he said, laughing. School's not a punishment. Um, it's the factory that makes useful men out of boys. Don't you want to be like your father and brothers? I was not convinced. I did not believe there was really any good to be had, to be had in cheering me away from the intimacy of my home and throwing me into this building that stood at the end of the road, like some huge high wall fortress exceeding Western and Grim. When we arrived at the gate we could see the courtyard, fast and crowned full of boys and girls. Go in by yourself, said my father, and join them. Put a smile on your face and be a good example to others. I hesitated and clung to his hand, but he gently pushed me from him. Be a man, he said, today you truly begin life. You will find me waiting for you when it's time to leave. I took a few steps and then stopped and looked but saw nothing. Then the faces of boys and girls came into view. I did not know a single one of them, and none of them knew me. I felt I was a stranger who had lost his way. But glances of curiosity were directed towards me. One boy approached and asked, who bought you? My 
father, I whispered, my father's dead, he said quite simply. I did not know what to say. The gate was closed, <coughs> letting out a pitiable screech. Some of the children burst into tears. The bell rang. A lady came along, followed by a group of men. The men began sorting us into ranks. We were formed into an integrate pattern in the great courtyard surrounded on three sides by high buildings of several floors. From each floor we were overlooked by a long balcony <coughs> roofed in wood. This is your new home, said the woman. Here too there are mothers and fathers. Here there is everything that is enjoyable and beneficial knowledge and religion. Giant tears and his life joyful. We submitted to the facts, and this submission brought us off content. Living beings were brought to our community, and for the first time, I had made friends with such boys, and as were to be my friends, and fell in love with such girls as I was to be in love with, so that it seemed my misgiving had had no peace. I had never been in school. Swing, the voting was voting. In the music room, we should presented our first song. We also had our first production plan. We saw a group of which revolved and showed the various uh, continents and countries. We started learning the numbers. The story of the creator of the universe was read to us. We were told of his presence throughout the universe hereafter, and we heard examples of what he said. We ate delicious food, took a little nap, and woke up to go on in friendship and love, play and learning. As our path revealed itself to us, however, we did not find it to as totally sweet and unclouded as we had presumed. Dust-laden winds and unexpected accidents came about suddenly, so we had to be watchful, at the ready, and very patient. <coughs> it was not all a matter of playing and fooling around. Rivalries could bring about pain and hate <coughs> or give rise to fighting. And while the lady would sometimes smile, she would often scowl and scold. Even more fre frequently, she would resort to physical punishment. In addition, the time for changing one's mind was over and gone, and there was no question of ever returning to the paradise of home. Nothing lay ahead of us but exertion, struggle, and perseverance. Those who were able took advantage of the opportunities for success and happiness that presented themselves amid the worries. The bell rang announcing the passing of the day and the end of work. The throng of children rushed toward the gate, which was opened again. I bade farewell to friends and sweethearts and passed through the gates. I peered around, but no trace of my father, who had promised to leave it. I stepped aside to wait. When I had waited for a long time without a bed, I decided to return home on my own. After I, after I had taken a small few steps, a middle-aged man passed by, and I realized at once that I knew him. He came toward me smiling and shook me by the hand, saying, It's, uh, it's a long time since we met last night. How are you? <laughs> Again, uh, he shook me by the hand and went off. I proceeded a few steps, then came to startled halt. Good Lord, where was the street lined with gardens? Where had it disappeared to? When did all these vehicles invade it? And when did all these parts of humanity come to rest upon its surface? How did these hells of refuse come to cover its sides? And where? were the fields that ordered it. High buildings had taken over. The street surged with children and the disturbing noises shook the air. At various points stood conjurers showing off their tricks and making snakes appear from baskets. Then there was a band announcing the opening of circus with the clowns and wing lifters walking in front, a line of the tracks carrying central security troops, called majestically by... The siren of a fire engine shrieked. And it was not clear how the vehicle would clean its way to reach the blazing fire, a battle raged between a taxi driver and his passenger, while the passenger's wife called out for help. 
and no one answered. Good God! I was in days, my head spun, I almost went crazy. How could all this have happened in half a day, between early morning and sunset? I would find the answer at home with my father, but where was my home? I could see only tall buildings and hordes of people. I hastened on to the crossroads between the gardens and Abukoda. I had to cross Abukoda to reach my house, but the stream of cars would not let up. The fire engine siren was shrieking at full pitch as it moved at a slim space, and I said to myself, let the fire take its pleasure in what it is uh, consumed. Extremely irritated. I wondered when I would be able to cross. I stood there a long time until the young lad employed at the iron ring shop when the corner came up to me. He stretched out his arm and said gallantly, Grandpa, let me go. So the punchline is the very last sentence of uh, the story. Okay, while the story is fresh in your mind, take out a piece of paper, any piece of paper, and please answer this question. What is the author's message in the story? Go back to your predictions. Are they the same as what you expected? Are they not? And why? We're going to give you five minutes, and please write nonstop during this time. Even if you can't think of anything, just keep writing the same thing until new ideas So come. think of everything we've done before, and... Uh, now, after we read, and what comes to your mind? Um, so, if you can write that down. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, now, let's come back together. It's okay if you haven't story. finished. And remember, I, this is what I would tell my students, is that remember, nobody's going to see this writing except you. It's only for your thoughts. And if they got stuck during the free write, then I would just have them write about their day until something else comes. Um, but the point is for them to not stop writing during that time period at all. And they'll say, you know, I've run out of ideas. I have nothing to say. So, tell me what you had for lunch today. Whatever it is, just start writing it. So, now, please go back to your writing, reread read it and see if you can bracket any portion of that writing that you feel comfortable sharing with the whole class. So it could be one sentence, it could be one phrase, anything that you want to say. It can be one word. One word even, yeah. Something that you feel you can share. It can be the whole thing. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's from what you have written. Go back to what you have written yeah. and then choose a part that you feel oh wow, I really had a good idea when I wrote that <laughs> sentence, you know. Uh, and then you highlight that or underline it. It can be a sentence, it can be a word, it can be a phrase mm -hmm. from what you have written now, when we give you the three minutes. So from that. Mm -hmm. Sense of responsibility. All right. Oh, wonderful. Sense of responsibility. Anybody else would like to share? Go ahead. Um, I actually wrote down a list of phrases and sentences from mm -hmm. the So I wrote memories, flashbacks, uh, through the eyes of someone, who is at the past, black and white, peace, colored, chaos. So what is uh, modern day is way too kind of chaotic for our memories. We're confronted with reality rather than our memories, which may not necessarily be the same. We remember the good things, selective, rose-colored, which is where our conflict between memory and reality lies. Yeah. OK, go ahead. Can I share everything? The whole it's up to you. So what I've written is, time flies by so fast. The pictures compared past and present, I guess. Uh, they also focus on the speed of time and the changes that take place without uh, noticing them sometimes. This is also related to the quotes discussed as they talk about time and how quickly it can move on without us being mindful about it. So time, speed, being busy, priorities, then death. I guess those are the main ideas discussed in the story. Go ahead. You had your hand up, right? Go ahead. Maybe the key word here Aging. Aging. S Sarah? Um, I had a line that said, our surroundings change along uh, with our perceptions, but we don't always know when or how. All right. Mine went back to this quote. Death may be the greatest of all human blessings, but at the end, <laughs> you know, at the beginning it seemed like you think of him as a kid and he's happy and everything, but at the end with everything that's going on, and when he realizes or when it, it's sad, so then it's, for me it's like, yeah, maybe that's why that quote is there. <coughs> All right. So if there are no other um, 
other thoughts. So this Can I activity, just, just please. Just one thing, please, because please. I had a question. Um, if you notice while the reading, there were times that I read only a couple of words in a phrase. And this mm -hmm. is one of the things that we try to do with the kids because there are kids who are not comfortable reading. And if we ask a student to read, they would don't want to read aloud. So if we open it to the kids and some kids would read one word, one phrase, they would not feel intimidated because they would not think, oh, I'm the only one who doesn't read or reads only one word. There are others. Uh, so this can be, you know, uh, to show them that so so people will be encouraged to say something you don't have always that quiet student um go ahead i've done this activity before and I, what i've realized about a lot of things like this is that the students need to be trained to do it yes absolutely so if you do it once and this is the mistake i make sometimes so i do it once and then it, it doesn't it doesn't work and i'm just ready to give up on it but it's not it, yeah it's not quite it needs it needs time and practice yes can i ask a question mm -hmm. They're related. There are two. What if, um, because there are the good readers or the people who like to take over, mm -hmm. and they read on and on, and even if someone else is taking, uh, reads a few sentences or a few words, then they, they're ready to do it one more time for the whole lesson. And the other idea is, what if uh, um, a lot of students decide, I don't want to share anything. So it's like five students have said what they've ri written or shared it, but then there's silence. They're, the, re the rest don't want to. So the first thing about the reading is I tell the students everybody has to share one time. Once everyone's uh, shared one time, then you can come back to your ideas and say everything else you want. And the same thing with the reading. Everybody has to read at least one time, even if you only read a short portion, and then we can come back to the readers who are more excited to read. Uh, um, but there are teachers I know that uh, if they have students who over uh, you know, speak in the mm -hmm. classroom. Uh, sometimes I know of teachers that they give cards uh, to those students and in order to control them and they say, uh, they give them two or three and they say every time you speak, you you know, you put the card mm -hmm. aside. As the moment you're done with all of your cards, then you're done sharing for mm -hmm. the day. So choose carefully what you want to say in class today because maybe you will come to a point that you're really eager to say something but you're out of cards. Uh, so that will make them think carefully and don't jump all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. to, to speak, you know, the whole time. Yeah. Absolutely. This is, this is something like, because I know what the story is about. I know, you know, uh, in order to get the kids excited and put them in the mood of it. So, you know, because you notice now that this, the quotes are related to the themes and ideas of the uh, story. Yes. Um, so one last thing about the, the focus free writing, something that we would do after um, the writing and the sharing is that that will then be the basis of our discussion. We can come back to that question. We can build on a different question from there. Um, but what's really interesting about the free writing, once the, get the kids get into a habit, with it, like sometimes some teachers do it every single day, first five minutes of class we're going to free write. But what's really interesting about it is that it's not just that you're putting into words your ideas that you already have. The act of writing helps the students to generate new ideas. Um, so it is very helpful for And that. just one last yeah. thing. There is a technique by Deglamo for, uh, for whoever of you are uh, familiar with it, which is the, his book, uh, what's the book's title, uh, Deglamo the oh, yes, teach like, like a champion. champion yeah. uh, the one of the techniques is everybody writes. Mm -hmm. And because sometimes when I say, you know, uh, tell me what you think, and they're, they're kind of, you know, surprised, and they're confused, and they're embarrassed, and they don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. But if we give time for everybody to write, so then everyone would have something to say. They would not feel intimidated being selected by the teacher because they have written something. I will tell them, you don't ha you know, they don't have to think on their feet and come up with an answer right away. They already took time, they thought about it, they wrote something, and if they shared one word or one phrase, they feel comfortable that they said something, but I have given them time to think and write before I say, you answer, which also will make them more comfortable uh, in the classroom yeah. um, when they speak. And in terms of grading, I don't grade this kind of writing for grammar or spelling or anything like that. It's just meant to help get their ideas out. It's supposed to be raw. There's going to be mistakes. And they shouldn't be self-censoring at that point. Um, so what I have, I have a, a writing notebook for them. And the only thing I grade for is I want to see writing in there. If there's enough, I'm going to be happy. If there's not enough, then we need to start writing a little bit more. Um, OK, so moving to close reading activity. We have close writing, close. actually. Um, so if you're going to look at page 9, please, at the top there's this passage with blanks in it. This is a passage directly from Half a Day. 
um, you can take, out a, take a passage out of any text that you're working with and remove key words from the text and then have students add their own words in. Now, tell them not to go back to the text because then they'll just copy the, the words that the author has used. They can use synonyms. They can use any word that fits into that, that bracket, uh, that uh, blank. And it's really helpful because they can then have to see what comes before it and what comes after it so then they can practice their grammar skills. Um, once they've done that, they're going to share out. Um, and different people may see the same sentence in so many different ways. Um, so then it has them think, uh, think about um, the choices that an author makes and the impression that that gives. Um, so let's do this for two minutes. Two minutes. Yeah, let's take two minutes, please, and, and fill in some and of these blanks. And even if you come up with words that will give us an op the complete opposite meaning of the text, please. You know, we're trying to see how the students can work with this and come up with their own ideas. Yes, passage one. And you don't have to do all the blanks. You can do whichever blanks you feel you have something to say. Yes, please. Okay, I wrote, we submitted to the rules and the submission blog is sort of chaos. <laughs> living beings are drawn to calm, and from the first moment my heart made friends with such boys as were to be my friends, and then love with such girls as I was to be theirs. But it seemed my nerves had had no basis. <laughs> 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 the first had this rich culture. We played all sorts of different games, swings, the waltzing chorus, and ball games. In the music room, we chanted our first chants. We also had our first introduction to PE. We saw the globe of the earth, which spun and showed the various continents and countries. We started learning the continents. The story of the creation of the universe was read to us. We were told of this present world and of this year hereafter, and we heard examples of what could be. We ate delicious chocolate, took a little walk, and woke up to go on the school and homework activities in place. Wonderful. Thank you very Thank much. You. That was good. <laughs> okay, so actually that does happen sometimes. Sometimes they'll put really funny words in there. And I mean, it's, it, they're having fun with, with the text, which is really good. Um, okay, shall we go? And if you used synonyms, if some students yes. might, weaker students, might go back to the text because you know, they're not really sure. Uh, and they might go to the word and just write synonyms. And that's, that's fine. It's, it's yeah. great. And um, a, s a question that came here, and she said, I have weaker students. And I said, we design this <laughs> based on the level of our students. We select which passages. We select which words to erase. Um, and if I have really different skills in a classroom, which sometimes we do, I can do a differentiated activity where I divide them into groups. And each group, I give a different passage. It doesn't have to be. Uh, the same passage uh, so each group can feel good about themselves coming up with the words yeah. that they can and write. Cut there was this a question? Down. Yeah, it was over here as yeah. well. It's, it was about weak learners. You can cut this down even to one sentence and everybody focuses on a single sentence and you try to get, get the meaning out of that yeah. and talk about the grammar of the sentence and all of that. Um, so, uh, is that good? Do we have any questions at this point? No? Okay. All right. So very quickly, I'll explain the, the found poem. This is another fun activity and gets them thinking about the words of the text um, in a different context. So here, we ask them to write a six-line poem or however long poem that you want um, using only words from the text. So go back and look at the text and circle all of the words that you think are important. And then you're going to write a poem using only th those words. And then they read their poems as well. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah, they can choose words or phrases or sentences, but from the text. But they need to try to make it as connected, uh, you know, that makes sense yes. in one way or another. Yes. Um, so, and it's kind of a minimum of six lines. Do we do want to do that or just move on? I think we can move to the literature. Okay, so I, let's, let's move on for the sake of time. So this is another idea that you can use, but we'll work on another activity. Mm -hmm. So, sure. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yes, my, my daughter is seventh grade, and um, she, she, for every text, they, they read a lot of books, but for every book they read, they have to create a found poem. Some of them, they become, some of them are better than others, some of them are funny or, you know, but not every time they will come as great 
or good, but at least they try. They, they have to really understand the words of the text very well to be able to put them together, right? And they have to uh, know how to structure a sentence. So it's kind of a both reading and writing activity. So you're not expecting it to be a sonnet, you know, by the end of this it will be. Uh, you know, something simple just to show you as a teacher that they understood the passage, they can play with the words, and they can come up of a piece that they can own. And they have, you know, so. Yes. Um, and actually, I wanted to talk about another question here. So for the first reading activity that we did, for a text like this, the kids are not going to understand it the first time that they read it. We would have to have them reread it again for homework, focus on a particular passage, and we'd go through it several times. I mean, it wouldn't just be, you've read this, now you get it, and we're going to move on. Yeah, so, so it does require more time. Um, so, and yeah. as, as we we're saying, you decide. The passages you will read in class will be the passages based on the levels of your students. We selected passages that we use in our classroom, but based on what level you teach, you can design this based on the level that you teach. Okay, so um, this is another activity which actually um, I took from the AP uh, course. Um, so this is called Literary 3x3, three three, and it's a fun activity. And when we did it as teachers, actually, it took us some time to, to work on it. But it was so much fun when I did it with the kids in class. Um, so this activity actually encourages them to think outside of the story a little bit. And sometimes when we discuss a certain passage or text for some time, you start to hear the kids repeating the same things over and over again, just different words, but we, we hear the same things. And in order for them to get them a little bit out of their comfort zone, um, we do this activity which also can give them some ideas maybe for writing afterwards. Um, so this comes in two steps, the literary, the original and literary. And we're going to play this one now, so uh, this is what we're going to do. The first time um, in your groups, you're going to, uh, and actually we have a sample in the back which is full of mistakes, so you can find the mistakes um, in it. Um, the, uh, the original is you have to write three sentences. Each sentence should have only three words in it, but it has to be a meaningful sentence, like a sentence consists of three words. And uh, you have rules, and the rules are, which are on page nine, you are not allowed to use names or proper nouns. You are not allowed to repeat any word in any of the lines. You are not allowed to use verb to be, is, was, are, where, no. Uh, you're not allowed to use pronouns, he, she, it, you, no. Uh, cliches, no, articles, no. So it has, you cannot use any of that. Now, um, what you can use, it, it has to be complete sentences, abstract nouns, effective word order, contractions. So since you're limited to three, so you can play around with it and put the <laughs> apostrophe S and add that word without being counted. Um, strong words, especially verbs and adjectives, and present tense. Um, so if you look at the one we have, it's... Uh, it's kind of full of mistakes, just uh, we kind of did not follow the rules. Um, so, some, and so the first one had to be, has to be a summary of the text. So the three sentences need to have the essence of beginning, middle, middle and end. So in three sentences, each sentence three words, beginning, middle and end of the story. That's step one. When we get through this, we have to do the literary part which is to give the essence of the story, to go beyond the plot. What themes or ideas or thoughts that come to mind after reading the story. Um, so life ends quickly, maturity needs time, live, love, enjoy. Um, so let's play this game a little bit. We'll give the groups about five minutes to try to come up with step one and step two. Um, Summary and then essence of the story. Three by three. And it's not an easy one. It will take time in class. Talk <laughs> about. So who would like to share? All right, go ahead. Okay, uh, the first three. Father releases son. Boy gets educated. Elders unpleasantly disappointed as an elder is. Oh, wow. Great. Uh, the literary. Life's long journey. Death's unnatural blessing. Adulthood comes fast. Thank you. That was great. Anyone else would like to share? <coughs> All right. First one and three to death brings comfort, memory does forever. All right. Thank you. So as you noticed, it's not an easy task. 
Um, so talking to some groups, I was telling them, I allow my students to use thesaurus and to use the dictionary. Uh, they can learn and, and play with new words that they've never used before. It will make them remember these words forever because they spend time searching and looking for them. Uh, and, it, and when we create these sentences, we can take some of these sentences and make it um, something for them to write about or to explore more or, um, you know, to present something oh, about. Amazing. So it will, uh, because they generated those, those statements, it's kind of some, it's their work. All right, so Liz. Okay, uh, let me see. So it's I have to ask questions. You're not going to talk about dialectical journal. Oh, no. me. Okay, so I'll go over this very quickly because I think we are we're running out of time. Um, so yesterday, the sessions I have attended, most of the ones it seems the themes that I was selecting, they were talking about how you know what we teach the students now might not be the thing that they really need in 20 years or 15 years. Um, and in one of the sessions, one of the ladies talked about that in 25 years, uh, almost half of the jobs that we see right now uh, will, will be gone, will disappear. So, you know, so we start thinking about what are the skills that we need to the, our kids to have. Um, so, one, um, so one of the things that we always think about is in many, many cases, or in most cases, we as teachers prepare questions and we expect students to answer these questions. Um, and how often do we work with the students to have them create their own questions? The questions that they are interested in, not the questions that I'm interested in, things that they think about. Because if we think about it you know, in real life, if I read an article, if I read a story, um, there will be ideas in my mind things that I will wonder and I will think about while reading it. So this is a natural thing that happens in the reader's mind. So while reading, why not have the students explore this? Because by doing that, it enables them to be thinkers, to process what they're reading, and to maybe work with the ideas that really interest them in the piece that we're working with. It's not necessarily something that interests me, but something that they are interested to read more about or to search. So uh, this is an activity that I use very often with most of the texts that I teach, which is um, how to ask questions. And maybe many of you are familiar with it, which is the three level questions. Um, so each student needs to create, um, or sometimes I put them individual, sometimes in groups. So after we read a text, they need let's say each group to come up with three questions. Level one, level two, level three. Level one is a question that can be answered directly from the text, but it has to be crucial to the discussion. You know, not what's the name of the boy, or you know, um, it has to be, it's, it's, a, it's a question that comes directly from text. And if we think about it, this also can be helpful for those shy students or weaker students because it's something that they can get directly from the text so they will feel that they have participated in the class discussion, they have said something. Um, the other question, level two, um, it's a question and an example I have here for you on page 10, which is what did the boy learn at school, which he has direct answer that he, when he talked about numbers and Quran and blah, 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 and all of that. Um, level two, um, it has to be inferred from the text. So the kids conclude the answer, but the answer is based on an evidence that they can get from the text. The yes or no questions are not allowed. Um, so, how did the boy feel about the school and did this feeling change throughout the story? So did this feeling change throughout the story is something that can be concluded from the text and the students need to provide evidence. And so that shows uh, close reading and deep thinking about the, the, the text. Um, the third one is a question that goes beyond the text. The answer cannot be something that came in the story. It has to be something related to the bigger ideas and bigger themes uh, that the story or the text uh, uh, was about. For example, here, the question is, what is our greatest fear in life? If you read this question, it has nothing to do directly with the story, but the story kind of, you know, if you discuss it in details and in depth, it, you can get to that part. So here the students are the ones who are generating these questions. They are coming up with them. It's based on what they saw, what they understood, how they themselves interpreted the text. Um, and then so that will generate discussion. So um, if 
he, you know, proposed a question, it might be interesting for other people to have a class discussion about it. Um, and it might be later on a topic that they can write. So it can be the, their writing prompt that they pursue, and it will be something that they will be excited to write about and not just another homework that the teacher gave me to write about. So, um, uh, but, so they own it, and it will become more interesting. So, and it's a higher level of thinking because they need to create the, the questions. Absolutely. Do they work like in groups? Do yes. Well, them? sometimes I do it in, like if I have smaller class, we do it individual. But if I have a bigger class, um, it, they work in groups and the, they come and they can come up with more than one question for each level. Mm -hmm. So if as a group, maybe they come with two questions for level three, it's and fine. Are they going to go to another group? Uh, no, we, uh, we share. We share. We, we do like the think pair share thing and we share in the classroom and we see because some groups might have similar ideas in the questions and so that means they they receive the story in a certain way or the text in a certain way. Yes. Um, I think it's maybe an obvious uh, question but uh, do these activities come after uh, uh, other readings to be read? Yes, absolutely. This is after they read and we understood, we discussed, and um, yes, they, they need to have a deep understanding of the text before we do these questions. So I, th I think that we can divide these three questions into before reading, during reading. And yeah, but the, the answer directly from the text, they can't. Level three, level three uh, it is critical thinking. After yes, three. yeah. All right, so let's okay. dialectical. So very quickly about dialectical journals. I'm, I'm sure some of you have heard of these before. But if you go to page 11, um, a lot of what we've done is them actually talking about things. So some students, in spite of your best efforts, are just not going to want to talk that much. So this is another way that you can get them involved. And it's just, it's with two people. So, you know, they kind of have to talk back to the other person. Um, so dialectical journals, in the first column here, they can choose any passage they want, any quote that they want from the text and then write it out here. It could be something that they're confused about, something that they really liked, something that made them angry, whatever it is. And then in this second column, they write their response to it. So that response could be um, their thoughts about it. It could be questions that they have about it. Why did they choose it? Why did they choose it? Yeah. Yes, exactly. And then um, if you have um, students who don't really know what responding to, to a text means, you could give them an actual question to respond to here. Um, and then for the, the final column, they switch papers with their partner. And their partner writes an answer to them. So that could be they're answering their questions. It could be, well, I thought about this text differently. I understood it like this. Um, so then it gives them a chance to, to talk that way. You can actually do this um, for multiple rounds if you give them multiple pieces of paper so then it goes back to the original person and they write again and it goes back and forth. So what I do is like I have at least two or three responses so if I, I choose the text and then I write my response to it and then uh, you know Liz will take it she will read whatever response I have she will respond to that maybe answer my question and then it will go there and then so you can add columns depending on how many times you want this to go around and then it goes back to the uh, original because you know people see texts in different ways and interpret yeah. texts in different ways and sometimes I'm I don't understand this text I write a question and people are answering my question yes so yeah. Yeah. okay big paper discussion big paper discussion we have all right 15 so minutes left. quick oh my god so we'll yeah. do this quickly okay <laughs> um, big paper discussion actually um, the first time I was introduced to this is uh, from our head of department Eric mm -hmm. uh, Hansen and um, Sometimes the classes become too loud. They speak too, they talk too much, and we want them to calm down, to think deeply, and to write, to work on things. So uh, th this is when the big paper, um, this is a literally big paper uh, question, uh, you know, activity comes in. So um, the big paper um, activity is an activity that will uh, you know, we put the students in pairs. Um, in, in some of, uh, cases, you can put them in four, but depending on how the class, but ideally, it's, uh, you put them in two. And uh, what you have is after reading a certain text, you probably put a question in the middle of the paper. So if I put a question in the middle of the paper about the text, it can be a quote that they analyze. It can be a direct question. Um, it can be, you know, grammar. It can be whatever question uh, you have. Um, and then let's say uh, you two are going to work with this. So the paper, uh, we encourage students to use different colors pens or pencils or whatever. And so each student writes his name at the corner, 
here with uh, whatever paper uh, color they use. And then um, each one of them needs to write a response for the question. And they can play with how they do it. They can write sideways, upside down, you know, it doesn't have to be in a, any order. It's their own, you know, paper and creativity. Um, and then what I requi require the students after they write their response uh, to that, um, what they do is they switch, so it depends on how they write it, so my, they can slip the paper, change places, um, and um, the other uh, person will, be, will read the first person's response and write him a question about his response. Something that I took from what that person uh, wrote, and then um, I questioned some of his ideas or a concept that he has written um, or a thought or to encourage him to uh, say something more about something that was confusing to me. Um, so, um, so I will give it to her, to Liz, she will write the question to me and then we'll go back. The, the paper will be flipped again, you know, and then I answer that question. Now this can go as long or, and th in this case, we give instructions to the students. It's complete silence. They're not allowed to say any word to each other. No. Um, nothing. So the writing has to be clear. The ideas has to, they have to be clear. <coughs> the question that I write to my partner has to be clear. It's a silent communication. Um, so we just read each other's thoughts and ideas. We question that. We respond to these ideas um, and we share. And actually this is something that I collect and I give a holistic grade. Um, so when they're done, I collect and I have, I know who is who because they wrote their names in a different color. Um, and I collect it and I look how they answered. Uh, and I don't really grade harshly on that. It's just to make sure that they took it seriously. They've done the work. They've answered each other's questions. So it can go, you can make it like two or three questions, go back and forth, and you can make it, you know, one or two, uh, depending on how much time you have. So I don't know if you have time, but just for, uh, since we gave you this, um, I was, we were planning to read History of My Face, which I don't think we have time to read and analyze and go so, over. No. Um, so History of My Face is for Khaled Mutawa. Um, it, you have it on page uh, 13. So maybe I'll read this quickly. So History of My Face. My lips came with caravan of slaves that belonged to the Grand Senussi. Uh, he's a Libyan uh, poet. Um, in Al Jarboub, he freed them. They will live in the poor section of Benghazi, near the hospital where I was born. They never meant to settle in Tokara, those Greeks whose eyebrows I wear. Then they smelled the wild sage and declared my country their birthplace. The Knights of St. John invaded Tripoli. The residents of the city sought help from Istanbul. In 1531, the Turks brought along my nose. My hair stretches back to, the con to a concubine of Septimus Severus. She made his breakfast, bore four of his sons. Rukba took my city in the name of God. We sit by his grave and I sing to you. Sweet lashes, arrow sharp. Is that my face I see reflected in your eyes? Um, so it's a, with, in our Arab literature, uh, you know, course, um, this is a text that we discuss and we talk about um, you know, ourselves and um, how nobody really is pure. There is not one race really <laughs> that's pure. Um, and so after a discussion of the poem and after we talk about it, I think each group, did you give each group? Yes. The, so uh, the question that uh, we came up, I came up with is, I gave them another short poem and I said, uh, so the question that I will give them will be, so after reading and discussing history of my face, read the following poem and discuss how the two poems are connected. Uh, what do they have in common? What do they share? Um, so I'm not sure if we have time to do that. I don't think we do. So uh, how much time Look do we have? Ten okay, so we have only 10 more minutes. 
So we'll just go over a couple more activities quickly. I'm sorry, we're running out of time. <laughs> no. And we can come back to something at the end if we have a little bit more time. Um, but we're going to be on page 15 now. Um, and I would like to explain literary circles. Um, I don't know if you do that already in your classes, but this is um, a way for students to be prepared for discussion and to allow them to have complete control of where that discussion goes. But they can't do it without preparation. So um, what you do is you assign students a role. Like it could be a different role each day that you do this. Somebody's a discussion leader. And then if you turn to the next page, that's their discussion leader sheet. You have to have it prepared before you come into class so that when you come into class, you have your questions to ask your group um, and you know what you're going to say. Then there's a connector who makes connections between the text and other texts that we've read or um, the world in general. They prepare the sheet. Um, then we have... The line lighter, this is a really interesting one. And when I have a hard text, I have a couple of uh, people do a line lighter role because um, they come up with, with different lines that are interesting. They prepare them, um, they look at the line, they interpret, and then they bring that to the group and an illustrator. This is especially useful for students who um, are visual learners. Their language might be a little bit weaker. So I'd put them in a group with other stronger students and then have them draw their interpretation of the text. Um, and then everybody comes in, they share their ideas. And the discussion leader's role is to not let the, the group down, to not let the group um, you know, get off task or um, I guess not get anywhere either. <laughs> OK. So um, they come yes. and they sit in four. And each one has his or her role. And yes. then, you know, the discussion leader has a role, the line lighter has a role, the illustrator. And then, uh, as a teacher, I walk around. Right. So this is a, if we have a long text, this will be the best way to kind of go through the text because yeah. it takes shorter time yeah. uh, to discuss the, the pages or the material. And each one has a different one. Yeah, you give yes. it uh, the day. Uh, I only get to see my yes, yes. and yes. you give it the day before. So yeah. they prepare this as homework. And they come the next day to class ready. Exactly. Yeah, this is yeah. as homework. And um, let me just. Because, because there is a weak uh, student, yes. can the group with a stronger? Yes. So the line Line lighter can be a little bit difficult, but if you coach them, this is really helpful once they've done it a bunch of times. So if you coach them and tell them, you know what, pick a line that you have a question about, and then they just pick lines that they have a question about. Or they think a line is important to the text. But they may not know why, and then they ask the group why. Um, and one thing I'd like to add also for weaker students, you could also add a summarizer. So somebody whose his only job is to come in and summarize the text and tell the, the group the summary, uh, and a characterizer. So then they have to analyze the characters and talk about them. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm sorry we're rushing through this, but we're trying to get as many activities as we can. So moving to the other reading and writing activities, this is something I do. I teach a writing course. Um, and uh, this is I've done with my class because in many cases we have, you know, the kids are not very happy with the prompts that we give them <laughs> to write about and they're not happy with the rubrics that we use. So uh, this is something that I do sometimes that I have them create their own prompt and create their own rubrics. So um, what, so this is, I will do this as a sample. On here you will find Sandra Cisneros vignette from her book The House on Mango Street uh, and it's the vignette that's called My Name. So we read read that passage, we discuss it, and we talk about it. And after we talk about it for some time, I will tell them, what if Sandra Cisneros was a student who was in a classroom and she produced this piece? Uh, what do you think, what question did the teacher give her to produce this piece? What was the prompt that she was given to produce this piece? And depending, because this piece is kind of rich and have so many ideas, um, we usually have an open discussion about what uh, could have been the questions that she was given. And then what we do is that we agree on two or three prompts that maybe I can, because the kids can have similar ideas, so maybe we can bind them and come up with two strong prompts or three strong prompts that they came up with. So I write those on the board and, those, and then their task will be to write a passage or write a page in response to one of these prompts that they created. So, uh, so they created the prompt and then their homework is to go ahead and to choose one of these prompts and to write um, about it. Then after that, 
Um, what we do is, after reading Sandra Cisneros and discussing it based on how strong the writing is, what are we looking, I said, so what did you like about the piece? What did you think was strong in her piece? You know, we discussed the language, the word choice, the type of details, uh, the grammar, um, how she wrote the narrative. So we kind of dissect the piece on, you know, what was really, did you really enjoy it? And they say, yes, it was interesting. So why did you find it interesting? What was so good about it? And then I write down everything they come up with and I say, okay, so if I'm going to grade Sandra Cisneros and give her a grade, what do you think will be the two top three or four things that I need to use to grade her you know what will be the two four things that if she I grade her for she will get a full mark you know and then we decide so we start selecting and eliminating until we come up with maybe four or five things that I choose and an example here I put uh, we chose the in my class we chose narrative word choice and use of detail so after they write their own page responding to the prompt they created I grade the paper based on the rubric they created I said you sel you selected you thought that her piece was strong in the narrative in the word choice and in the use of detail so um, and if she was graded she will get a full mark on those three okay so after we decide on that I say I could after they write and I collect their papers I will use the same rubric we discussed and we used in class to grade uh, their papers and they will feel it's fair yeah. they've done it <laughs> and they chose it and um, that and actually it was the best piece of writing you know they came up with because it was their choice and their rubric and actually they came up with really good stuff so I think that I'm sorry we're running out of time we have three minutes left so um, we're going to go right to the end to page 24 with loop writing there's plenty of other activities and there's instructions for them um, do you want to explain loop writing very quickly okay loop writing as I said I teach a writing course and um, we need to come up with different things for them to write about, to be creative, to write their own things. So one of the things is uh, we do is uh, probably I put an image that I choose that has many items and many things. Do you want to put uh, oh, yes. that one? Um, so, and then we go through loops. So a question I ask, uh, you know, list everything you see in the image. So we kind of go in the writing gradually. We don't start with a big chunk or a big paragraph or a page. You know, list uh, thing, everything you don't see in the photo. Uh, describe the image, caption for someone who cannot see it. If this image or photo was a piece of music or piece of literature, what would it be? So uh, this is a technique that uh, I learned and it makes them take things slowly and they focus on one small thing at a time and they write about it. You know, and then later on, you know, depending on the, the image I have or what I'm doing, I can have them create um, a whole piece, you know, a whole, you know, a text that they write themselves. So do you want to do yes. something with it? Um, I don't think we have the time to do that, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but I do want to make sure we have time to ask questions. Um, just the art gallery, because there's no explanation for it. You can choose any pictures that you want. They could be related. They could be not related. Um, have them around the room. And then students can go around and ask questions about it and write pieces about it. Um, we really hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, we're happy to answer them. You could email us or come talk to us now. Have a very good Thank day. Thank you guys. very much Thank for you. coming. Thank you.